Hello everyone, I'm Florian Müller and as part of the 13th edition of the JW on Fashion Film Festival, I will now have a conversation with journalist and sustainability advocate Bandana Tiwari. She oversees the new conscious fashion section of the festival, which is why I want to find out which films exactly she's looking for and what conscious or sustainable fashion means to her. Before I hand over the floor to Madonna, I'll briefly introduce myself. Currently, I'm based in Berlin, Germany. I've been working in fashion for 20 years, specialized in PR and guest management for fashion shows. And I also studied psychology and got recently trained to offer psychotherapy. This is why I bring together the topics of mental health, sustainability, and my fashion expertise. I'm also an active member at Fashion Revolution Germany, where I'm in charge of the working group on mental health and sustainability in the fashion industry. And I'm very happy to talk today with a woman who not only brings a lot of experience from the fashion industry, but above all has her heart in the right place. Banana, I'm so glad to see you. Um, the last time we had contact was a few months ago when you were an inspiring speaker on our sustainability platform 202030, the Berlin Fashion Summit. Banana, please introduce yourself briefly and help us understand your role within the fashion industry. Thank you, Florian. Thank you so much for speaking with me and giving me this opportunity. Um, well, my name is Bandana Tiwari. I live in Bali. I am by birth from Nepal, but I grew up in India. I'm as much Indian as I'm Nepalese and now Balinese, perhaps. I worked with Vogue India for 13 years. I was part of the inner core that started the magazine in an amazing country. And after 13 years of working in Vogue, I gratefully and hopefully graciously bowed out of my job, moved to Bali and pivoted to becoming a sustainability activist in the fashion business. I have loved my part of the journey and perhaps one of the reasons why I'm speaking to you, Florian, about what we are going to talk about today is based on um, the changes that I made from very high fashion, which is all beautiful and fluffy and lovely, to living now in the beautiful jungle of Bali and talking about the interconnectedness of nature, uh, talking about conscious consumption, not conspicuous consumption. And I have to say, I feel very passionately about it. Yeah, interesting. Um, when we talk about fashion, we have to say that it's extremely complicated to have a sustainable fashion brand. And if you're honest, it's impossible, especially when we're talking uh, of large scale production, you can only try to be as sustainable as possible. And that's why sometimes other terms like beneficial, or you mentioned it already, uh, conscious fashion are used. But I must confess that I still like using the term sustainability. Um, taking into account the name of the new conscious fashion category of a shaded view on fashion film festival that you are in charge of, I dare to assume which term you prefer. Either way, I kindly ask you to give a definition in your personal words, what sustainability, conscious fashion, or whatever you choose means and what relevance fashion has for you. Yes, I mean, it's a very pertinent question, Florian, because we are all grappling with our own ideas and our own formulas and our solutions for uh, sustainability or being sustainable human beings. So of course, I believe in all these ideals of sustainability and all these different pillars that govern um, what it means to be an activist in this field. But on a personal level, somehow, when you say you're a conscious person, in the world of sustainability. Consciousness brings the unit, you, the individual into focus. So what it means is that then I have to be responsible for how I think, how I feel, and the changes that I'm going to make to be part of a, the, the system that is going to look out for our environment. When we say conscious, it's something that I, I have to take personally because conscious comes from consciousness. That is your mind, your brains, your heart, your body, your being on this earth. So for me, conscious fashion is an affirmation that there is a personal responsibility to how you look at sustainability. 
because sustainability is a huge umbrella brand. Mm -hmm. There are people doing amazing stuff in sustainability that I can't possibly do. The people who are innovating, there are people who are making amazing cloth out of algae and mushroom and vegan leather, and that's their forte. They're innovators. They're into research and development. But I'm not that. So where do I play a role? When I say conscious fashion, then I bring my own responsibility on a day-to-day -day level to the forefront. How do I buy consciously? How do I pull out my wallet with my hard-earned mon money consciously to make a conscious, well-informed purchase? So those are all in my hands. If I don't want to use plastic, it is in my hands. So I need to take ownership over what sustainability means for me. Yes, there's so much going on with sustainability. And we applaud that and we celebrate that. But what am I doing personally, individually? What are you doing individually? So putting conscious in front of fashion makes our daily activities of consumption less brutal to the environment because we are conscious about what we are doing. Yeah, actually really beautiful explanation. And maybe in future we'll rather use the term uh, conscious instead of sustainable. Um, but was there a key moment that you became involved with sustainability? Um, where did your interest in this topic come from? You know, Florin, it's so funny because a lot of people think sustainability is just about, you know, oh, you're just choosing not to wear polyester. You're only going to wear cotton. You're not going to use plastic. I think sustainability as a sort of a life-changing affirmation comes from a lot of uh, pain uh, of emotional upheaval in your life that can be very personal. For me, it was very personal. When your whole life goes into turmoil, you know, when, let's say in my case, your marriage breaks down, you feel lost, but you're in a high-profile job in vogue and you're pretending to be happy. And then suddenly all the things that you're told to buy and consume, the best bags, the best shoes, they, they, they mean nothing because you're so unhappy inside. So the act of sustainability is about being a sustainable human being. And if you're not emotionally sustainable, how are you going to help the universe? How are you going to help your brothers and your sisters who live next to you, beside you, if you are not grounded in yourself? So from a very deep sense of personal unhappiness, I made a lot of changes in my life, which included leaving the bustling city of Bombay. You know, it's the power center of, of India, leaving that and moving to Bali, leaving Vogue that I worked very hard in and loved every bit of my 13 years and saying, thank you, but I need to go on another journey. Leaving everything that, I'm not trying to be pompous, I feel like I'm sounding a little pompous. So what I'm saying is, personally, just dismantling your own life to pursue something new. I didn't know what that newness was going to be, mm -hmm. but it came to me when I came to Bali because I'm living in nature. I walk barefoot. There are coconut trees and there are papaya trees all around me. There are, there's chanting, there's worship of nature. There is every god and goddess that's a personification of every form of emotion and intellect that you can think of, statues strewn all over, mm. you feel so grounded. And that's when I thought, I want to continue to be in fashion, but I want to be in a world of compassionate fashion, where we understand what it means to uh, admire, acknowledge the work of people in our business who are not noticed, who are invisible, Also to acknowledge that for everything that we buy and we purchase with so much glee because it's so cheap that someone is paying the cost and it's always someone out there in a developing nation so far away from your glitzy life, sitting in a village, raising children and sewing your buttons. We've forgotten the humanity in our clothes. So living in Bali has been a great reminder because My whole body is planted on the soil. You know, it, it, I know it sounds esoteric and sounds a little like, you know, loopy, 
but it is about feeling connected to so many things around you that you are not the only person that matters that there are others that matter not just human beings that matter the plants matter the animals matter so therefore i can say no to fur i can say no to leather all that comes integrated into a humanitarian principle that you can live by mm. and it comes organically and for me it certainly did yeah really interesting and thank you so much for sharing these beautiful words um but are there also any other aspects which are especially important to you uh, when it comes to sustainability do you have also other things you keep in mind talking about that yes i have many <clears throat> many many aspects of sustainability that interests me but because of my own heritage my provenance where i come from as i told you it's nepal it's india i live in indonesia now and we have an incredibly rich culture of old wisdom mm -hmm. so i'm no expert i'm still the student of sustainability i'm still learning i still study very hard and i give full credit to men and women out there who've been tirelessly working in this field for 30 40 years and perhaps not even been acknowledged right and so for me a the acknowledgement that i know very little that i need to know more so the ideas about sustainability is so wide that please let's not pigeonhole ourselves and say i'm sustainable because i don't eat meat i'm sustainable because i don't buy leather i'm su sustainable for blah 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 so many pigeon holing that happens what we should look at is a holistic sense of who we are because we are the very people who are consuming in a variety of ways right and we've been told that we have to be divided we have to be segregated in our own body forgetting that it is this one individual that has to understand the principles of sustainability that actually is philosophical and spiritual that sustainability is at the, the the heart of what gandhi used to profess the principles of ahimsa which mm -hmm. means nonviolence nonviolence in thoughts deeds and actions his words mm -hmm. he said nonviolence is not a piece of garment that you wear and take off at will its principles is ha has to be in your heart mm -hmm. of course i'm paraphrasing but the idea that you can keep talking about sustainability in a very academic way but if the change doesn't come from within from your emotional self from your gut so to speak then how are we going to make change that is authentic then it becomes a trend then it becomes a fleeting moment then we will cheat and say okay you know this time i will wear leather this time i will bypass you know some sort of absurd um principles that are laid out by these big brands and the green washing that's happening we can keep making excuses so i think for me sustainability has to be an emotional call a spiritual call for change it's a holistic experience it's not meant to be divided into little parts if i love you as much as i love myself and i love the other person next to me i love the tree i love the animal that kind of all pervading respect and dignity for people and things around us i think that is a, a great way to start your journey in sustainability yeah i must uh, i have to say i'm talking quite often about sustainability with other experts and uh, this was probably the most interesting and also beautiful what i ever heard especially when you brought that as aspect of uh, spirituality and also gandhi into that it's quite interesting and um, i would really talk to yeah talk to you more about that maybe in another talk but also um you mentioned especially that you live right now in bali and when we talk about sustainability we should probably also look at where and how we have grown up or in which part of the world we are currently located and you mentioned it already you grew up in india traveled the world through your work as a fashion editor and now you live in bali as you mentioned um in your opinion how does location influence our sustainable behavior in general what is your opinion on that you know there's a saying geography is history 
geography mm. is identity. You know, I think we've been living in a world that became so industrialized, became so globalized, and then became so homogenized that we all became too similar. Mm. Similar for all the superficial reasons that I can go to Tokyo, I can go to Jakarta, I can be in Bombay, I can be in Berlin, but I can buy the same t-shirt, the same hoodie, the same jeans, wherever I go, forgetting that a country like Japan has its own culture, mm -hmm. that a country like Indonesia has its own culture, that a country like Germany has its own culture. So my point is not to say that we shouldn't be similar. We are similar because our humanity is similar, but we should be different because our cultures are so vibrant and diverse. Mm -hmm. And that's why diversity is such a big thing in the fashion world right now, because we recognize that difference matters, mm -hmm. difference in the way our cultures differ. If I came to you in Berlin, I want to know all the nuances of how you live in your country. You know, what is it? What do your grandparents tell you? Just like when, if you came to my country, you would want to know the same thing. Deep dive into our cultural provenance. So yes, we should be similar. Universally, human beings should be similar in the humanity and the compassion and the principles that we live by. But mm -hmm. the difference and the vibrancy and the color is understanding that where you live, where you've grown up, your region is different. It's mm -hmm. characteristic, it's individualistic and has so much to give in terms of inspiration to other people all over the world. Just like I get inspired by haiku poetry from Japan. I love the crafts that come out of Mexico. I love the ikats that come out of Sumba, an island in Indonesia. Being specific and giving gratitude and um, I think, you know, just being humble about the journey of culture in different parts of the world to celebrate that difference, not say that we're all the same. Why the hell do we want to be the same? We love the difference. What I would love to see in you and me the similarity is that thread of humanity and kindness. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. And um, yeah, I mean, Banana, you're not only a really amazing person, but of course also an experienced professional. And of course, you know the fashion and sustainability industries very well. But tell me how the collaboration with Diane Pernay came about. What did you want to achieve with this new conscious fashion category? Oh, first of all, thank you, Diane, if you're listening to this. What an opportunity. You are exemplary in what you've done with this amazing film festival. And I feel extremely privileged because for the first time, this edition of uh, Shaded View of Fashion has fashion conscious. Mm -hmm. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Conscious fashion as a category. There are three special curators um, and um, we are very privileged because to be included in an amazingly popular platform of fashion films um, and have sustainability and sustainable films to be at the forefront, to be invited to that, I am eternally grateful. I've known Diane for a long time. We met in India at a time when fashion weeks in India had just begun and she was very much part of it. And so we've known each other for a long time. And I've always gone through the kind of incredible work that she, she's been doing. She, I mean, literally, she's the first fashion blogger that ever existed. You know, like that is something. And so this is a shout out to the category that I'm curating, Conscious Fashion. We are asking for filmmakers from any part of the world to please submit your film. The submission is for free. And so that I don't get it wrong, you can submit it on filmfreeway.com slash A-S-V-O-F-F, okay? Now, the idea of submitting these films is not to be daunted by <clears throat> when was it made, how long is it? It can be in any form. If you have a cartoon that talks about sustainability, please submit it. If it's in manga style, 
submit it. If it's long form documentary, please submit. It doesn't matter. The idea is that we are delighted to have entries that come in that talk about sustainability from different regions of the world. So I am literally shouting out to the countries that sometimes get left behind in this wonderful dialogue um, of sustainability, which is the Asian countries, uh, the Indian subcontinent countries, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Afghanistan, the Middle Eastern countries, uh, please, Bangladesh. I hope we get entries from Bangladesh and all the beautiful countries in Africa. I think it's a given that the Western world is so profoundly developed that, you know, we don't really need to do these shout outs because you get it. But where I come from, we are a lot of people. <laughs> and so I really beseech uh, filmmakers to give it a shot and submit the films. The last uh, date for submission is September 31st. So you do have a bit of time. You can go onto the website um, and get all the details. And if you would like, you can get onto my Instagram at Behave Bandana, and I'll be posting regularly to update you as to where you can upload for free. And I think it's very exciting, don't you think, Florian? I feel really excited, you know, when sustainability becomes sort of cool and mainstream and hip and sexy, I think that's, that's something that's moving in the right direction. No, I totally agree. I mean, I'm also excited. And I mean, you, you spoke or I asked the question how it came um, along with Diane Panay. And um, I know also for quite a long time, for almost 20 years, and talking about sustainability, I just thought when you, while you were speaking that, of course, she also made sure that um, young artists could sustain, right? I mean, we should also keep that in mind when we talk about sustainability. And um, yeah, I was actually wondering also if you have any particular uh, topics in mind you prefer for the competition, but it sounded like that you're really interested in getting a, a very wide spectrum of different films. And you mentioned that the deadline got extended because officially for the other sections, the deadline is uh, end of July, I guess. And you mentioned it, that for your section, the conscious fashion section, it got extended to end of September. Um, yes. September. Right, yeah. Um, as far as the topics are concerned, there are no holes barred as long as you talk about um, the sus sustainability has to be the underlying um, platform mm -hmm. for expressing your thoughts. But, you know, there's so many types of storytelling. And I was telling you before we started the session, I've been researching and there are amazing storytelling that's happening from the point of view of a young girl who is working in a factory in Cambodia, for instance, to a young boy who's making uh, sneakers in, 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 in Bandung, which is a manufacturing hub for fast fashion companies in Indonesia. There are all kinds. There are joyous stories. There are heartbreaking stories. Um, so, no. I'm not going to put a cap on what kind that I'm preferably looking for because I'm a writer. I think storytelling happens in a variety of ways. And if your narrative is compelling and if it is within the field of sustainability, the reason I'm curating the section, then you are absolutely welcome to submit to your film. Beautiful. And um, as a PR person and guest manager who specialized in fashion shows, I, of course, love them when they're well done and meaningful, I would say. But I must admit that I find fashion films also quite exciting and uh, realize their potential to dig deeper into certain genres through formats such as documentaries. If it doesn't require a new collection to be made, I find it even better, to be honest. What do you like about fashion films? What topics are you personally interested in? What is, what is your opinion on that? I, I love fashion films. And funnily enough, I told Diane this, and I'm telling you now, Florian, I did my master's in filmmaking. Oh, I didn't know. And, uh, and you know, it's perhaps my joy and you know, one of my first loves, so to speak. I love filmmaking. And I love fashion films for the reason that in a very esoteric, fleeting way it transports you you forget for a moment that it's not just things mm -hmm. you know that it's not just the thing that you're wearing that thing becomes elevated that thing that product whether it's a watch 
pair of shoes, a beautiful dress, sort of elevates into a realm of art and creativity, of imagination and daydreaming. Mm. And so we are so used to catalogs of beautiful things in fashion, things being sold in malls. Like it's so harsh the way things are sold to us. It's almost inhumane. It's like banging at you constantly. And fashion films become ethereal, mm. you know? They're softer, beautiful ways because I think it communicates creativity. Mm. The product is the aftermath. What it communicates is the creative soul of the teams that work towards it, not just the ones who made the product, but also the ones who made the film. Mm -hmm. You know, all the, the key, the, the stakeholders in generating this beautiful narrative. So it's like reading a beautiful poem. It can transport you. You don't sit there and necessarily think about who that author is or, you know, you don't even care because as long as it allows you to float in your own imagination. So I think it takes away, fashion films takes away from the brutality of consumerism, you know, to put it in a very <laughs> harsh way. It takes away that brutality and then puts it in a more gentle, ephemeral, bouncy world of imagination and creativity. And that's why I love fashion films. Cool. And uh, we have for the um, conscious fashion category of a shaded you on fashion film festival. Of course, many exciting films should be submitted, as you said it already. But are there ways we are able to support the festival through donations or other means? Is there anything which might be important to you where you might need support? Well, all I know is that you need to put in your submissions onto the website, which is filmfreeway.com <clears throat> hashtag not hashtag slash a s v o f f so um you know maybe we should ask diane because i'm sure there are other ways you can contribute but for my section my primary concern is that we have films mm. i don't care i'm not going to be the judge and say good bad or ugly it's not about that if you're excited about your film please submit it And, you know, you'd be part of this big dialogue, be part of the first time that sustainable, sustainability films are going to be introduced in this amazing film festival. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this was probably the PR in me that I was thinking about um, how we could support in sharing, spreading the word. But uh, for sure, I'm going to ask that to Diane. And uh, I also make sure that I spread the word about the not only about the section, but about the whole festival. Uh, well, I suppose a way to spread it is like, if anyone's listening and you have friends who have a film, elbow them, nudge them, tell them to, you know, a lot of young filmmakers who make short films and, you know, make it out of their heart and passion and very little budget feel scared because the world out there can look so polished with filmmaking, and you know, so... Be a good friend, encourage your friends to participate. Um, and yeah, spread the word on social media. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. I mean, especially that you also uh, mentioned that um, we should make sure that a lot of people hear about it and not only always the same ones, right? And the, the word is so huge and it would be interesting to see more talented. I think, I think just going on to the a Shaded View of Fashion website when this event happens. It doesn't matter even if you don't submit films. And you see the array of films, mm. the bouquet of films that are presented that are going to ignite your imagination and give you creative fodder if you're an artist, if you're a designer, if you're a filmmaker, if you're a poet. It doesn't matter. It's just fuel for your creative mind. So I don't think it's even about submitting a film in the end. It's about participating and looking at how wonderful our world is and how creative our human beings are and to participate in their journey and be inspired by that. Totally agree. Yeah. Um, I mentioned fashion revolution earlier and I believe you know the movement very well. It's much about raising awareness of uh, problems in the fashion industry and at the same time, of course, creating ideas for change. 
for my definition of sustainability, inclusivity also plays an important role. What problems do you encounter in your everyday work and how inclusive is the fashion industry in your opinion? Oh, it's, well, it pretends to be inclusive and it looks visually inclusive. But I wonder if that happens within walls, in conference rooms, in board meetings, uh, you know, where policies are being made, where changes are being envisioned. So there's a lot of lip service done to this whole idea of inclusivity, diversity, gender, LGBTQ rights, all of it that we see now cover after cover in high fashion magazines. But it doesn't take away from the fact that a lot of the times they seem to be quite distanced from the policies that exist within the very countries where these magazines are coming out. Mm. I think if we really want to make change with the written word and the visual medium, with high-powered, high-browed magazines and newspapers, then I think we need to sit back a little bit and look at the politics and the society of the times and see where we can create influence to mm. make real changes. If you're going to be in a country that does not accept LGBTQ rights and your magazine is going to talk about diversity, What is that? Mm. That's paying lip service, mm. you know? So you just want to sound like you are of the moment, but you are unaware that uh, there are governments and systems and nations and policies that are still marginalizing a massive section of our society. So I want, like for me, the challenge has always been that we have to talk about real issues, real problems, in a fun way, but to also engineer solutions. We mm. have to pave the way for a dialogue to happen where it results in change for real people to lead dignified lives that they have not had a chance to so far. So it's all hunky-dory to make it look all pretty in a magazine, but what is the impact that you're making in policy change? And can you do that? through the magazines that you run, through the words that you write, through the visuals that you create. I think we need authenticity, authenticity in that dialogue. Yeah, totally agree. And also coming to the next question then, and the more one deals with the topic of sustainability in fashion, the more one must also deal with the topic of colonized structures. What is your opinion on that topic? I'll on colonized fractures, that's the, how long we got? <laughs> um, yes, we have, you know, I come from a country that was colonized for a very, very long time by the British. Um, and so we have learned to understand what all those nuances are growing up. I mean, you know, we benefited a lot from, let's say, being able to speak English. It's It's, it's now my mother tongue in the sense that I can't speak any other language except Nepali, perhaps, um, to go about in my world. So not to take away from all the benefits. But what happens with this sort of fractured, colonized world, which is now coming alive more and more, you know, when so-called colonization is over, is the deep damage that has been caused over millennia because of colonization. So for instance, if you come to the countries in parts of Asia, for instance, that have had been heavily colonized, the way we look at fashion, the way we appreciate fashion, the dialogue in fashion, everything has a very Western lens because that's all we learned. We forgot our own provenance, we forgot our own heritage, that we had our own customs, our own rituals, our own clothes, our own, own colors. We kind of put them on the side because that's not gentrified enough to talk about. Everything mm -hmm. that's gentrified comes from this fractured colonial mindset that we've been trained to believe that you're not good enough till you look towards the West. Mm -hmm. And so for us, a lot of us, uh, it's breaking those barriers without being angry because it happened in the past. But let's recognize what are those patterns that we are carrying forward while we talk about 
Mm. What could be very simple things like clothes, but it leads to clothes leads to uh, a dialogue about identity. Identity leads to dialogues about integrity, of heritage, provenance, pride, ancestors. So I don't take clothes lightly at all. So for us to understand how to appreciate clothing and see the significance of it, that we need to get out of this fractured, colonized mind and embrace the culture that you were born in. As I said, it's the humanity that should be common to all of us now. But cultures should be wonderfully different. Thank you. Thank you for that really beautiful um, answer. And I think I couldn't have done it in such a short time. Uh, amazing. Um, transparency, supply chain law, even the hashtag who made my clothes are topics of sustainable movements. And do you notice a change in the industry that fashion professionals suddenly want to know more and question? Do you see any, any change there? I absolutely do. And kudos to Fashion Revolution, really, who, you know, who made my clothes. All, all these digital revolutions that took place put the consumer with a smartphone at the forefront mm -hmm. of asking questions directly to the brands, questioning their integrity, their transparency, their accountability, because we are living in, you know, I'm old, but the millennials and the post-millennials are now more and more equipped to make better, well-informed decisions about what they purchase because everything is at their fingertips now. <clears throat> so we should, get, we should take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it is extremely important to see the backstory of any brand mm -hmm. because there is a backstory. The way I grew up in fashion, all we were shown was the beauty, the aesthetics of a beautiful garment on a beautiful woman on a ramp. And then the curtains were drawn. No one peeks behind the curtains, but mm -hmm. now we do, we can, thanks to all these wonderful uh, entities that have surfaced, including Fashion Revolution, uh, Extinction Rebellion, you name it. You know, you go to Ellen MacArthur Foundation website, what you can learn from these, the, the work that's been done for so many years now at your fingertips. I think we have no right to dismiss a vast majority of people who are in the supply chain, who have mm -hmm. been invisible for so long. They've been voiceless for so long. They've been underpaid for so long. And unfortunately, they also come from a world where governments don't support them to, be, to have a voice mm -hmm. because they're developing nations. So we need to play a much bigger role as consumers to hold brands ac accountable. We are spending our money. We want to know where our money is going. We want to know what the brand is doing. Those are the fundamental things that should drive consumer behavior. Mm -hmm. We have a right to know because it's our money that is being spent. So let's stop pretending that a big chunk of the world doesn't exist mm -hmm. because that big chunk of the world is making most of the fashion clothes that most of us are wearing. And it's all happening in poorer countries. And we, we owe it to them to give, lend our voice with all the privilege that we have, privileges of education, affluence, all that we have, we owe it to them to raise our voice to support them. Yeah, totally agree. And I mean, um, it's good to hear that there is a change and uh, It seems like, yeah, we are on the right path right now. And now maybe a little jump, um, because I would like to hear from you one thing where you were inconsistent and not as sustainable as you would possibly like to be. What is that? And I say by purpose only one thing, because I'm aware that you probably might say there are a lot of things, but share one, one, yeah, one thing in your life where you would say you're not that sustainable as you would like to be. What is it? Oh, this is horrible. There is one, there is one and it kills me <laughs> because I want to travel. I can't wait for the pandemic to end and I want to travel everywhere and I want to travel a lot. But I also know what kind of a massive carbon footprint travel has today. And it's not enough now to say, oh, you know, I'm going to go to Hawaii, but I've like signed up online 
because somewhere, somewhere that I don't even know, some, you know, 2,000 trees are going to be planted because I've given $20 for it. I don't know. All this kind of like these systems to make us feel less guilty about traveling. So I'm like, I go crazy thinking about, oh my God, what does it mean for travel when all everything opens up? Because I want to travel, but how can I do it without being an idiot? How can I be an activist and then go around flying all over the world, zipping around like I did before? That would be, you know, not just not sustainable, but I would be lying about what I stand for, wouldn't I? So I'm trying to find a way out. If anyone has great solutions, I know one thing I can do is travel less. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I would want to travel really far away, with a, which would have a big carbon footprint. What am I going to do? So that's my biggest challenge right now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what else should I say? I also love traveling and um, it's mean, you know, when we are aware of what we're causing or damaging to the, what we, yeah, what we do to the nature. But um, hopefully there, there would, would also be a solution soon. I don't know. Um, but I firmly believe that we can only make a difference if we also reach the mainstream. Uh, for me, the most important thing is to give short, appropriate answers quickly so that we don't lose these people um, when we talk about sustainability. And therefore, the following situation, a good friend wants to shop sustainably and has no idea about the industry. What standard advice would you give to a person who really asks you? And I always keep saying, uh, my mother asked me, uh, they heard about sustainability, it's all over the media. And what would be your standard advice that someone could do sustainable shopping? Buy something that you're not going to throw away, period. If you buy something thinking that you're going to wear it a few times and put it in a dustbin, that's not sustainable. So make a choice, buy, by all means, buy something lovely. We need to support the industry. We love beautiful things, but buy things that you are going to keep, not throw away. Good. And I'm happy that you didn't say, uh, read a book, uh, watch a movie, do some extra studies, because I always keep saying uh, we have to be quick. And it's not that I would have always um, a short answer, But if it's getting too complicated, if it's too long, for sure, we're going to lose these people and they're not going to listen anymore. But um, thank you for that short answer. And now um, coming to the last question, um, what is especially important to you when it comes to sustainability in fashion or what annoys you or is there anything what makes you happy? Is there anything else you want to get out of the way before we conclude this conversation? Sure. I speak a lot about sustainability and spirituality because I believe that being a sustainable human being is an act of kindness, of compassion. It's uh, what we can say, the Buddha in you, right? Mm -hmm. That you are going to be that compassionate person. And in the words of Mahatma Gandhi, you know, who always talked about taking personal ownership, whether it was about civil disobedience, whether it was saying uh, no to a political system that didn't work at that time, whatever. It was about be the change that you want to see in the world. Mm -hmm. It was about personal ownership. And for me, that is very important. And I'm saying that personally, for me personally, because As I told you, I'm a student still. So my only way of telling you genuinely what I feel about sustainability is what my own life experiences have taken me through and my own sort of the wisdom that my culture has brought to my life. And it's there, mm -hmm. you know, in Sanskrit, uh, there's a beautiful term. It's called Vasudeva Kutum Bakkam, which means the universe is your family. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we grew up with these beautiful terms that can be expanded into essays that can go into 50 pages, mm -hmm. but they're all, as you said, how you like little crisp, poignant answers. So we grew up with that. So I focus now on what was taught to me as a child, 
what my heritage taught me about wisdom, about kindness, about compassion, and can I bring that into the world that I understand about sustainability? Mm. And for me, it's becoming more and more spiritual to be a kind human being that doesn't want to disrupt the environment, to look out for animals and people, to respect, show integrity to all species around you. You know, that act of kindness is a very elevated spiritual act. Mm -hmm. It is understanding the oneness with nature. It is understanding the interconnectedness between us and them. Mm -hmm. Not just people, but species. We're just one species, human beings. And there are millions out there. That interconnectedness with the cosmos from a micro level, from a molecular level, what quantum mechanics teaches us to a macro level, cosmology, you know, to understand that we're all unified. Mm. It's scientific and spiritual mm. and sustainable. Yeah. Again, um, very beautiful and wise words. Um, Banana, we have reached the end of our talk and I must say I had great expectations and it did not disappoint me at all. Stay as great as you are and I hope you will get a lot of exciting films submitted in the Conscious Fashion section of the 13th Shaded You on Fashion Film Festival. I'm very excited and uh, I say goodbye to all, of, to all of the viewers, to you of course. And um, for any additional information, please check out the website of the festival, shadedviewonfashionfilmfestival.com. So, bye. Thank you, Florian. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Diane.